journey with North Texas Networkers. And Stacy's not with us today, but I am so happy to be doing the show. And we are sponsored by Craig Schrank with Willow Bend Mortgage. And today's show and every show is about introducing interesting people across the DFW area. And I am really excited to introduce my fairly new friend. Her name is Michelle Robinson, and she is kind of a jack of all trades. She does producing, she does singing, she does cooking. She does so many things. She's an art, uh, not an artist, but a, a, a writer. So welcome to the show, Michelle Robinson. Thank you so much, Caroline. It's great to be here with you. Well, I'm so happy to have you here. And, and you really, you have so many talents, which is <laughs> awesome. Um, but first, just tell me a little bit about who Michelle is, who your family is, um, a little bit about you. Yeah, wow. Well, you know, I, it's hard to put all those years into a small, um, bit of information, but I'm going to try. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, I think more than anything, when I think of who I am, I'm a mother of four kids. They're all grown. Um, I have kids ages 25 to 30, my greatest um, fulfillment in life. But on a professional level, I'm doing a lot of things in the publishing world, in the production world. We have a television network and I've been in media and television and you know just producing either events or or um, books or you know also magazines for probably almost 30 years now mm -hmm. and also television so yeah so that's that's just a little snippet <laughs> I'm just giving you a broad high level overview <laughs> yeah well today I thought we kind of focus on one of those areas called um, boss yeah tell shine me like a, a boss little, yes tell me a little bit about that well shine like a boss you know i really can't talk about my life without talking about what god's done in my life right um because he's done so much and shine like a boss is pretty much that so i have my business and then i also have a leadership organization called shine like a boss but boss stands for building others sewing serving and usually you think about boss and you think about posturing and i'm a boss and you walk in thinking I'm all that, and I don't want to cuss on your show, so, but, you know, I'm a bad, you know. <laughs> yeah. The little number signs, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, dollar I'm dollar. the boss. <laughs> and I remember, you know, when I, I've, I've, I'm a serial entrepreneur, and I had a restaurant for four years, mm -hmm. and um, it was a huge restaurant, and people would walk in and go, who's the boss, you know? And when you think about a boss, you think, oh, that's the person that gets all the, the you know, the notoriety and things like that. but. A boss is somebody who has to do everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, when I had my restaurant, I put, there wasn't anything I didn't do. You know, I mean, I didn't wash dishes, thankfully, but because I had a great team. <laughs> they wouldn't even let me. My team would not ever really? let me out. No. And my, even my chefs didn't want me to get back there too often, even though I'm a chef. Because, you know, they, they're like the boss. There's something in that culture, and I had a lot of Hispanics that worked for me, that's like the boss doesn't, doesn't need to be doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So they were always taking care of me. They were That's really so nice. great. Yeah, it was really great. And but my my biggest thing is really understanding what boss means. And mm -hmm. to me, that means I'm going to be a servant in many ways to uh, to others and to making a difference to my community. Um, and that is all about building others, sewing, serving. Well, I love that, and I love that about you because even with the the minimal amount of time that I spent with you, you're so caring. You seem to, to want so much for others to do well, and uh, you're always digging for a way to to make things, make people more successful in what they do. And I love that about you. What what kind of brought you to that point where you thought I really want to serve others? I think I've. I mean, I have always been that kind of person. Even when I was young, I just I, really young, like in high school and out of high school. I was never that person that was about, I loved competing, but I didn't like the um, part of it that was pitting you against somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mind competing, but I want it to be how we collaborate more than compete. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm all about, I mean, I'm definitely somebody who will get in there if there's a competition <laughs> and I'll, I will do everything I can to win. But the bottom line is to win in life, to win in business to really win as a leader you have to celebrate others you know and and so for me celebrating others isn't hard because i just i love people mm -hmm. and i love seeing people shine that's why it's shine like a boss and so you know it's it's not something that was difficult it was kind of my nature mm -hmm. so i think that's part of my biggest um strength is is connecting people mm -hmm and celebrating them. And it's just, it's my gift, so. Well, yeah. so 
but was there something in your life that that happened that said you know what I really want to make other people feel good about themselves and and understand what it's like to build other people up is it was it a certain circumstance did you just kind of grow into to doing mm -hmm. shine like a boss How on the leadership side I think that was more of in just doing what I'm doing with business leaders on that side from from the more practical aspect I think it's just two I am from the emotional aspect which is helping women get beyond the things that are keeping them from their purpose and moving them forward because even though you know we want to celebrate women and we want them to walk out their purpose there's so many things that can keep them from doing that from that aspect there was definitely significant things that happened in my life you know I as a young girl I went through rape I went through uh, an abortion I went through and these are things that kind of molded and and really helped me to go okay these are things that happen to me but they don't define me but I, it took me a lot of years to get to that place that mm -hmm. they, they that they weren't a part of defining my self-worth and for many years I had no self-worth I mean I was I had very low self-worth so I wasn't able to walk in my giftings Carolee mm -hmm. and that is a terrible thing when you see somebody how many times you meet somebody with potential and you're like gosh they are amazing but they don't see it and so they're not able to walk in it they don't mm -hmm. walk in that purpose so I'm very, very passionate about helping women and men um, really see their giftings mm -hmm. so that they can walk out their purpose. How did, did you have a mentor or something that, that bridged that for you if you were feeling that way yourself? Well, and I now you're, you've become this amazing, <laughs> amazing um, support. Well, I had, I, you know, here's the thing. I went through a divorce when my kids were, uh, my oldest was 10 and my youngest was five. Mm -hmm. And nobody ever wants to go through something like that. But I will tell you, when you do have to press through something like that, it definitely changes you. And you have a choice. You can change for the better, or you can mm -hmm. change and be bitter. And I wanted to change for the better. And so I began to work on myself with a counselor mm -hmm. and say, okay, what are the areas that I need to be stronger in? What are the areas I need to forgive in? What are the areas I need to really look at that can be better and, and help me walk out that purpose? And so I spent about three years, and I, I also knew, I was already working with people, speaking, doing all these things, writing books. I was probably on my third or fourth book, and I'm like, I can't go out and tell people about life if I haven't experienced it myself. So mm -hmm. I knew I needed to do the hard work to be able to tell, you know, and help empower women to do the same hard work. How can I go out and tell all these people they need to do these things if I hadn't done them myself? So. I, I did. I spent a few years in counseling. That same counselor became a mentor, phenomenal man, helped me get free from the areas of shame, the bondage of shame, which was a huge issue. Shame was probably, and actually it is, based on counselors, um, on percentages, it is probably one of the highest things that keep people from walking out purpose. Mm -hmm. It's the number one thing people walk into a, a, a counselor for. And a lot of that is because it's so, you know, we are such self-accusers, you know, we play our video over and over again in our head thinking, this is who I am, when it's not who you are. You went through some things, but that doesn't make you, that doesn't define you. So, um, so yeah, so I spent a lot of years working with a mentor, a counselor, and, and then actually he asked me to run his counseling center, and I, I said, you know, that's not... I knew I didn't want to be a counselor. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love how it changes people, but it just wasn't my calling to be a counselor. So yeah. So yeah. what are some ways that Shine Like a Boss helps other women? What do you do with that uh, organization to, to make that happen? Oh gosh, you know, we, we really equip and we do that through, you know, there's nothing greater than hearing a woman's testimony. Mm -hmm. You know, you can say all day long, here's the information, but most people don't remember information. What they remember is people's stories. Mm -hmm. And so I bring in women who have gone from nothing to something. I bring in women who have built their own business. I bring in women who, I mean, these are all experts in their field. I bring in the top experts in the areas of government, media, education, um, you know, anything to do with walking out your purpose. I've brought those women in, even ministry, um, and so, and, and also um, the in entertainment field. I mean, I wanted to make sure I covered every span mm -hmm. with a woman who has walked in those shoes and who's seriously accomplished. Mm -hmm. So you're getting, I mean, the thing about coming to our events, not to 
be promoting that, but well, I mean, you the should. bottom line That's is... That's what we're here for. <laughs> well, okay, good. Then I'm going to promote it because it's definitely something that women will, uh, they will get, it's like, it's like being close to that level of, of success mm -hmm. is such an amazing thing. I wish I would have had someone in my life that could pour into me when I was young mm -hmm. to learn all those lessons that I had to learn on my own. You know, these women are going to share secrets that you you just don't hear. Most women are, don't want to share secrets because they're competitive. Mm -hmm. But these are women who are about collaboration. They're about empowering women. They're about celebrating women. And so that's what you'll get. You'll get to come to the event. You'll get to hear from these women. And, of course, we do have, a, we have the whole how do we help you walk through the areas that are keeping you from your purpose. So we have that track too so we do we do workshops on that and so you usually have wonderful speakers come in mm -hmm. women from all over the country if we I'm do. not mistaken yeah and so you'll have a basically a, um, some speakers and then you'll have breakout groups is that right yeah we have hone and, in on this and and issues. you know what Carolee our breakout groups are an hour and a half long um, and you get to choose to and it is really where people are their lives are seriously transformed mm -hmm. because in those those smaller circles they're able to really talk about what their needs are and and get those needs met because they're in a small group and people mm -hmm. can pour into them and you know it's just we create the atmosphere of women collaborating and it's amazing and how often do you have these events well we're only doing one this year mm -hmm. um in october and you can go to shine like a boss summit.com to find that out to find out when it's going to be and we we actually are just now or to eventbrite eventbrite has actually our registration but um we probably will do four or five next year. Mm -hmm. We're still kind of deciding how many we're going to do, but we'll definitely be doing them. Yeah. That's so exciting. Yeah, it is. Well, that's not all you do because you wear a lot of different hats. I, I mean, you're a singer, you're an author, you're, uh, I mean, you're just an amazing woman yeah. that I've really enjoyed the opportunity of getting to know you. And, and you're also an amazing networker. You're great at doing that. Yeah. Tell us just a little bit about some of those other aspects that you, you touch upon. Well, our company just, we do a lot of the, you know, serious scale marketing for mm -hmm. companies, for corporations. We do branding. Then we do social media, digital marketing. And we also are a publisher, so we publish books. So mm -hmm. if someone's interested in a book, doing a book, we help them get that book out. Um, we also do television shows. So if somebody wants a television show, we help them produce, direct, and we also help them get it out and get placed. Whether it's on our network, we have a television network called the Country Network. I can talk about that now, as of yeah. two days ago. Yeah, <laughs> so that's exciting. Yeah, and um, so we're we're very involved with con the country music um, arena, but we also have other areas where we go outside that and, and work with people. Well, I know when we we've, we've met together before, you've talked about some of the shows that you have, um, aside from just the country singers and things yes. like that. Yeah. So, what are some of the shows people might be familiar with? Some of the shows that we're doing right now. Or something that maybe they've seen, so they. We haven't. We actually haven't produced anything yet. Okay. We're just working on all that now. I've produced myself over the years. Um, I've worked with Beth Moore. I've worked with gosh. I've worked with so many different people. I'm trying to think. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of different well-known people. Mm -hmm. I've worked with on either video production or doing a television show with them or. I, I worked with Promise Keepers for two years, helping them with all their, their content and getting them really in a good place. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I have my own show. I did a show called Shine with Michelle um, for several years, and I'll be coming out with a new show this year. So, yeah, we're just, you know, we work with a lot of different types of clients mm -hmm. on, on their vision for communication. Because basically it's just a tool. You know, mm -hmm. television and media is a tool. We also are in films. We'll be doing a couple films this year. So, What type yeah. of films do you specialize in? Well, specifically this year we're doing westerns. Ah, because, you know, we're doing them for the Country Network. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's, they're going to be really fun. Well, yeah. it, those aren't the only hats you, you wear. I, I, I failed to mention that you're also a singer. I am Correct. a singer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't talk about that as much, but yes, I'm. I have my own band, and um, like I said, I had a restaurant for three years. But I've been singing my whole life. If, if there was anything you, I would have thought that was going to be my career, mm -hmm. it would have been music, because I love music, love, love, love. But you know, God had a different path, and um, I had four children. I have four children, and when they were young, I was a single mom for like mm -hmm. 15 years. I didn't have time to be playing in a band. <laughs> you know, I, was, I had my own band. <laughs> I had to take care of them. And, but now that they're grown and 
you know, um, I have the freedom to do it. It's, mm -hmm. it, you know, I had somebody say to me, and it, it really got me thinking. They're like, Michelle, what do you do for a hobby? I mean, you work all the time. What's your hobby? And it really bothered me because, you know, not bothered, but just kind of made me question mm -hmm. what am I doing that I just thoroughly love? I mean, I love everything I do, so it's hard. But I was like, what am I doing? You know, I need to do something that I really just love for fun that has nothing to do with work. Mm -hmm. And so music has just been something I've loved. And so I played, I tested it out. I played last year for the first time on my birthday and everybody loved it. They were already trying to book me again to somewhere else. And I was like, you know what? I need to take a step back and just think about this because number one, it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> the, the pay is not the same for what I do. <laughs> so I was like, I love this, but do I really want to work this hard mm -hmm. for so little money? Right. But um, not that it's not a little money, but still it wasn't what I normally make. So I was like, I had to really think about it. And oh, I spent a year thinking about it. And after a year, I thought, you know, I'm ready. To, I, well, I did it one more time and um, it was a huge success. And well, it's called Texas Sweetheart, right? Yes, Texas and Sweetheart. How did you, I mean, it's so fitting for you, but how did you yeah. come up with that name? You know what? I am a brand person, so I always think of brands when I'm thinking about anything I do and I just felt like that's a good brand for me for my food my cooking stuff my music anything to do with individual stuff that I do is it's a lot of fun and um, so you yeah. play at the Ven I'm correct? playing I'm yeah I'm singing at the Ven on June 17th so I think um our audience in third needs rail. to know about that yeah in third <laughs> rail I'll be in third rail uh, from from seven to ten Awesome. Yeah, it's all R and B. You're gonna have a lot of fun. It's dance music. It will be packed, so well, you can make a reservation. I, I hate to put you on the spot, but we have had people yeah. sing on our show before. You uh, oh, want to throw something out there, or girl? I don't know. <laughs> Let me think. Oh, you really did. This is something you had to like. I'd have to get my phone and go. What's one of my songs? I mean, with no, with no. Um, what I could do is let's see. Okay, I'll do this for fun for you because I love you. I love you too. <laughs> um, but I could do so. I'll just do a little bit of Purple Rain. Okay. But we have to have some music. So I'll just yeah, kind of I'm good with that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I used to sing this at my restaurant. Anybody that came in, they'd call me up to sing this song. Oh, how fun. I never meant to cause you any sorrow. I never meant to cause you any pain. I only wanted one time to see you laughing. I only want to see you laughing in the purple rain, purple rain, purple rain. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. I think everybody needs to go out and see you on June 17th. <laughs> Thank you. I would love that. <laughs> 7 to 10, and that's at the Venn. The uh, you and I've met there before, mm -hmm. but what a cool place. You know what? It's funny because I'm really selective. I'm mm -hmm. not just going to play anywhere. And um, I've just, it's one of my favorite places and they've never heard me. They didn't even have a, any, any music to go by, but they booked me for June 17th. And I really think they'll rebook. I think they'll, because I can bring a party. So I think, they'll, <laughs> I think they will rebook me. I believe that. Yeah. They, they're like, Michelle, if it goes well, we'll, we'll start making you a, a regular. So. Oh, that's fantastic. And that's the only place I really want to play. I mean, I'll play in Dallas some, but you know, we'll see. Well, it's close to home over there in Grapevine. And I know. Such it's a right great city. Street. I love it. I love it. Well, um, so you cook. In fact, I think Ziggy has a nice photo of you here. <laughs> I love this. Oh Tell my us gosh. a little bit about that. So um, that's at my mom's house. And oh, wow. I, so I know people think I'm so exotic and they meet me and they're like, so what are, what are you, ba what's your background? And you must love all exotic foods. And what's funny is I grew up on Southern food because my mother is from, grew up on a farm mm -hmm. in Honey Grove, Texas. Oh, wow. So I grew up on salmon patties, mashed potatoes, <laughs> fried chicken, chicken fried steak, you know, all the standards of country. And I know how to make all those really well. And then, of course, I am also, I had a Tex-Mex restaurant and all my recipes are from the Tex-Mex restaurant. So yeah, I love cooking. I love entertaining. And I love my restaurant. Um, we probably, I had, I had a stage, we did music, I had two bars, huge venue and an outdoor patio, it was amazing. 
you know, if there's anything that can ever connect you to a community, it's a restaurant. Mm -hmm. I mean, you open a restaurant and you get to know that community. You know who's having babies, you know who's getting a divorce, you know who's graduating. I still have a girl, this has been five years since I closed my restaurant probably, mm -hmm. and she just texted me about her son graduating. I had another friend um, from the restaurant who asked me if I would get together with her and bring my oatmeal cookies. We, I, I made oatmeal cho chocolate chip cookies. I love oatmeal cookies. cookies. Yeah. I'm going to have to remember to ask you for that. <laughs> I still did a lot of the baking because um, I grew up, again, southern, you know, pies. I, I can make, uh, my our popular pie in the restaurant was apple. So I'd, we do apple pie, we do chocolate. And it's funny because the chocolate cake, I never really made chocolate cake, but one of my clients that used to come in all the time to the restaurant, I mean, he came in twice a week and he ordered so much food every time. And one night he was like, you know, I'd really love it if you'd make chocolate cake. And I'm thinking, great. You know, <laughs> well, in my family, cake. we don't <laughs> use boxes. Uh -huh. We do not use boxes. So I'm like, I'm going to have to figure out a recipe. That's going to be a lot. And so, but I, I said yes. And I will tell you, <laughs> this is funny, but I used a, a, a version of somewhat, um, you know, my recipe, but also the box. Mm -hmm. So I kind of combined. And, um, it was amazing. I mean, it was such a good cake and it became one of our best sellers. I mean, literally I sold that cake like, and I actually did half <laughs> white icing, half chocolate mm. because people, they, they're like, um, they're really, they're drawn to something with their eyes. Right. So I, I would put that cake out there with the chocolate and the white and mm -hmm. they would always notice it. Sell out. I would sell two to three cakes a week. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, if your kids were going to ask you for a favorite meal, what would you, what would they have you cook? Well, you know, salmon patties is my favorite meal from my mom, and they do love my salmon patties. But I would say if it was from the Tex-Mex, and they all, they can all, really my, my youngest son became a chef there. My second born was from the house manager. Um, my only, the only one that never worked in the restaurant was my oldest, but mm -hmm. they all love my enchiladas. I mean, I think that that would probably be, I would say, or I make um, a really great, um, carne asada mm -hmm. you know so it just i have several but i would say probably my salsa and my enchiladas they would they would ask for so i don't make salsa yeah. but the, my enchiladas are my family's favorite yeah hands down they like it better and look than at going you you don't even look hispanic <laughs> i know i just happen to <laughs> well you finally kinda, hone that you recipe look hispanic. super super good i kind of look hispanic with my no, like kidding. beautiful tan yeah you have that <laughs> it's because you just got back from the beach that's it <laughs> that's it for sure yeah well so you also, I'm going to shift gears on you, but you are also an author. So tell yeah. us a little bit about some of the books you've written. Um, what, what, what type of stories do you tell? So a lot of, um, when I did my magazine, I had a magazine for nine years called Shine Magazine. We mm -hmm. had 40,000 subscribers and publishers just started asking me for books. They were like, we really would love for you to do a book. And at the time my kids were pretty little and I was like, I don't have time to write a book. And I would tell them, no, no, no. They'd take me out to dinner. Finally, I... I just got this, um, the message that I needed to share was God crazy, an adventurous road trip to joyful surrender. And a lot of that was for my own personal, I write so much for my own learn, you know, background of learning, growth. Uh, if you're not growing, you know, life, life is not a good life. You have to always be growing. Growing is so important. So I'm always about growing, even mm -hmm. now. I'm like, what am I going to grow to next? You know, I always want to challenge myself to be growing. and. At this point, um, it was just so much of what I'd learned about the Christian journey. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you think the journey with God is just about going to church, you know, checking in, making sure you go to all the different functions. That's At least that's what I thought when I became a Christian. And the Christian journey is really about an act of surrender. And, mm -hmm. and I really think surrender defines the entire Christian journey. Because it's saying, I'm going to trust my unmet expectations, the disappointments, the failures, everything to God and mm -hmm. know that he's going to take that and turn that into something good. As long as my heart's in the right place. Mm -hmm. You know, if my heart's in a place of forgiving, surrender, repentance, you know, people don't like the word repentance, but repentance is a beautiful way that God gave us to bring our daily sufferings and disappointments that we have even in ourselves to him mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing 
you know, you think repentance like the old Baptist pastors that used to say, <laughs> repent, repent, you know, but it's a loving, beautiful thing that God does in our life to, mm -hmm. to be able to give us that opportunity. It's funny that repent. you say that because I just uh, have been doing BSF and our study has been Matthew and that was a big portion of one of our weeks was, oh, really? was the surrender and the repentance. Oh, that's it crazy. Was both of them. Yes. Well, because they really go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. To surrender, you have to repent. To surrender, mm -hmm. you have to forgive. Because basically, it's like holding your arms up and going, I give it all to you. Mm -hmm. So if you're giving it all to God, you're giving everything to him. You're giving the disappointments, the failures, the things that you've sinned, and that you know we all sin every single day, and the things that we need to surrender when it comes to holding on to things that we need to let go of. And so many people hold on. They get stuck in mm -hmm. life because they're holding on to everything. And I actually had a, a group of women who read my book when I, it first came out called God Crazy. That was my first book. And they literally went into a river because I talk about the river and mm -hmm. how the river runs. And if you get, step into the river with just one foot, you're not fully surrendered. You're, you're saying, you know what? I trust you a little bit. But when you, when you immerse yourself in the river and you let go of the banks and you say, I'm going to go down that river with God mm -hmm. and you flow into that ocean because it's a bigger thing that you're going to because you're surrendering then you really are fully immersed and you're able to let go and let God do something in your life. And mm -hmm. you can't let him do something if you're holding on like this. Mm -hmm. If you're saying, I'm not going to let go of the wheel, I'm not going to trust you, I have to be in control, then you're not able to really fully see all that God can do in your life because he can only do as much as you let him. So yeah, so it's, it's that whole act is just something that... So they actually went to a river and, and, and just held their arms out and fell into the river. Yeah, oh, wow. and they said there was so much freedom in that, just that feeling, and there really is. There's so much freedom. I think water is such a beautiful thing because it's it's that cleansing. It's saying, I just let go and trust God, and you know, just imagining standing, uh, imagine standing under a waterfall and just that feeling of that water flowing over you. And what God showed me was, even with the act of repentance and forgiveness and everything and shame, is that what how I was able to get free from that is God showed me a diamond and mm -hmm. and this diamond was flawless and he because I kept seeing myself as a flawed diamond and it was like there was nothing that could change that vision it was like I'm just flawed I'm flawed and how could I ever really do anything because I'm flawed that per you think everybody else is not flawed but mm -hmm. they're all flawed everybody's flawed so I'm sitting here and the Lord just gives me this vision of this diamond and over the diamond immediately all this blood just started coming over the diamond and the diamond was shining so brightly through the blood and God said that's how I see you I'm able to see you as totally flawless and beautiful and purified and bright and shining because of the blood that is of Jesus that he gave on the cross so I can see you as that so you don't have to you don't have to worry anymore. You can let that go. And literally at that moment, I was able to let go of shame. But it took a lot of years. But it only took that one moment. It was like oh, that one amazing. defining moment that changed my life forever. Mm -hmm. And it really did. it. That mentor changed my life. And it's funny how one person can come in your life and help you get free from the lies. Because, And I truly believe this. Everything is about lies and truth. Mm -hmm. It's either the lies you believe or the truth you believe that's going to move you forward. If you're believing lies, you won't move forward. If you believe the truth, you can be empowered to move forward. So, so yeah. So that's and I and that. I wrote. Um, I've written a lot of books. I wrote another book called Overcoming the Seven Deadly Emotions. That book was very dear to my heart because I had a lot of deadly emotion that was controlling me, mm -hmm. and I had to get free from it. And so, Overcoming the Seven Deadly Emotions talks about the root of that emotion, which it's jealousy, fear, anger. Um, shame, lust, and so all those, I talk about all those different emotions and the root, root of that emotion. I have a, I, I interview a counselor in there that talks about what that looks like to get free from it and the lies we believe and the truth that we need to overcome it. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I know we don't have that much more time yeah. left. So uh, quick question. What do you think has been your biggest challenge in life as you've come through and, and grown like you've grown? Well, um, my biggest challenge Number one, my biggest challenge was seeing myself. Do I only get one? Because <laughs> I had a lot of challenges, <laughs> Carolee. I, I gotta think about which one's which the was biggest. the biggest one. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was a single mom 15 years, so there was a lot of challenges in that. But as an individual and somebody who's had to overcome a lot, was my own stinking thinking, mm -hmm. my own the lies that I just continued to believe, and um, and they kept me in wrong relationships throughout mm -hmm. my life. Unfortunately. 
I didn't learn until later in life my value. And because of that, I was choosing people that undervalued me. Mm -hmm. And when you're with somebody who undervalues you, you're not able to really, well, you, there's this constant, instead of a, a feeling of, of synergy and being able to move forward together and grow together, there's almost like that competition feeling. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I wish I could have learned younger, but you know what? God knew my path. I'm just glad I learned it in this lifetime and I didn't die not learning it. Um, but yeah. Well, and the good news is you probably had some wins. What would you say is your your most proud moment about yourself? Being a mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no doubt, hands down, being a mother. I mean, my children bless me every day and they, they praise me and I'm just glad. I, I knew at a young age that no matter what I did in life, no matter what work I did, no matter no, no matter what I did, that my children would always be first. Um, even still, I answer the phone if they call me. If they called me now on the podcast, I'd probably wouldn't answer it. <laughs> but I would call them right back. But, uh, you know, they know that I'm available and I was always at their games. I sacrificed a lot for them uh, being a single mom. And um, I don't have any regrets. Mm -hmm. I, and it's nice to be able to sit here today and go, okay, I'm so glad I invested into their lives. Well, and I know I know we're shorter on time, but because your children are so successful, they're doing wonderful things. Do you yeah. want to share anything about what yeah. they're doing? Well, they're all just so unique. I mean, each one of them. And, you know, I've just watched them. You have to give your children the space to grow. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, we just can't stand when we see them failing or we can't stand when we see them hurting. And I have just like really, again, surrendered them to the Lord and said, I'm gonna trust you with my children. Mm -hmm. And so to see them come through a lot of stuff, especially divorce, that's, mm -hmm. that's very difficult, um, is a beautiful thing. And they've really all done the work. They, they, you know, kids and people model what they see. And when they saw me doing that hard work, now they've done the hard work. You know, my sons are in count you know, counseling, mentors, they have mentors in their life. I made sure they had mentors around them, but they literally have also just went and did that themselves as adults. Mm -hmm. And it's an incredible thing to see, because I'm like, wow. That, they listened. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they listened. And, and to know that a lot of the stuff I put in them, they're repeating back to me mm -hmm. at this point, and it's kind of mind blowing, because you're like, wow. They were, they did hear me. Yeah. Oh, well, you hope you're doing the right thing. I mean, you yeah. hope. Well, you know, we do. We, we build going. that foundation yeah. as best we can, and, and you, you know pray. that they, yeah. they. You pray, and you know that they've they've got some of it in them, and yeah. they're going to always come back to it. Yeah. So, well, okay. I always like to ask one fun question. Okay. And that is, if money were no object, and you weren't doing what you're doing now, what would you choose in life to be? Wow, I feel like I am doing everything. Yeah, that's why but, I always say not what you're I doing. I mean, okay, let me think. Um, <laughs> that's the easy answer. You know, I'm not that person that would just go live on the beach and do nothing. I'm so active. I would say I would probably be a, a little bit more modest of a J-Lo. Oh, fun. Dancing on stage mm -hmm. and just singing all the time. I mean, I just love it. I love it. I love performing. And, but I, I feel like I'm getting that opportunity even you though. You are getting that. So, and enough of it that makes me happy, but... I probably and I I'd probably do a lot more writing. Mm -hmm. Like I probably I, I have probably ten books right now I could write, That's but I don't amazing. have time to write them. I have had people ask me. Several people ask me to write a book on parenting. I've had people ask me to write a book on dating. I've asked you know so there's just things projects I would love to do. Like if I just could, you know, put work aside, um, I would probably be productive in content. That I'd probably mm -hmm. get a lot more content out there and speak. I would speak a lot more. I'm just now starting to speak again. So I am available to speak and um, I'm excited about that. I'll probably start speaking in the fall and then, you know, probably speak at least once a month after that. So uh, before we go, is there anything you wish that I'd asked you today that maybe I didn't? Gosh, girl, you asked me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> trying to squeeze you covered it a lot. <laughs> I mean, I would say that my heart is to see people get back to what's important in life. Mm -hmm. You know, I think COVID really helped us do that. But I think more than anything, if you don't have family, and so many people don't, you know, they don't. I, I have, uh, my parents have been married eight, 78 years. Is that right? Wow. No, no, no. I'm sorry. That's not, that's not right. I'm sorry. No, I, I got numbers confused. I have a problem with numbers. I get them confused. No, they've been married um, 59 years. 59. 
so they've been married 59 years and they have five kids i'm the oldest and we have 19 kids between us oh my gosh and you know what there is nothing on this earth that i love more than just being with i'm going out to my niece's graduation this weekend i'll be with family and there's just something beautiful about family you know and it's weird how i and i know you i'm i'm sure anybody listening understands this you get around two sisters or two brothers or you know a family and you see so much of the same personalities I mean, not personalities exactly the same but just the way they laugh or the way that they tell jokes and they think each other's funny and everybody's kind of looking at them going that really wasn't funny you know because <laughs> they get each other you know right. and you might not have that in your own family but go find the family out there that mm -hmm. can because there's people i just i connect with people that I, I connected with this woman her name's dr pearl I met her. I just happened to meet her. It was so circumstance. It's, it was crazy. And we just connected. Our souls just connected. And you and I connected. I mm -hmm. mean, there are people out there who have the same heart. And you just got to find the like-hearted, like-minded people who are really about making a difference. And those people will do life with you. And, you know, I call those forever friends. Mm -hmm. So finding that family, I would just say that's the only thing I'd like to leave your audience with. It's just, you know nobody needs to be lonely but you do have to reach out of yourself to to find family that's awesome you've yeah. given us so many good t tidbits and wisdom today and i so appreciate you being on the show it's just a Absolutely. delight and you are a delight it. so um thank you you're welcome um i'm Kara lee with north texas networkers and we look forward to seeing you again next month thank you for joining us again thank you craig shrank with willow Bend mortgage for sponsoring and i am your real estate professional and if stacy were here with me we would be your real estate professionals we'll catch her next month thank you so much Thank you for joining us on North Texas Networkers. Visit our website, mariposagroupdfw.com. That's M-A-R-I-P-O-S-A group dfw.com for more information about the show and other resources. I'm Carolee. And I'm Stacy, and, and we, we are, are your real estate, estate professionals. professionals.